So far, WHO has verified 18 attacks on health facilities, health workers, and ambulances, including 10 deaths and 16 injuries. These attacks deprive whole communities of health care. More than 2 million people have left Ukraine, and WHO is supporting neighboring countries to provide health care for refugees, most of whom are women and children. Some of the main health challenges we see are hypothermia and frostbite, respiratory diseases, lack of treatment for cardiovascular diseases and cancer, and mental health issues. The only real situation to the solution to this situation is peace. WHO continues to call on the Russian Federation to commit to a peaceful resolution to this crisis and to allow safe, unimpeded access to humanitarian assistance for those in need. A peaceful resolution is possible. And that's true in every war and humanitarian crisis to which WHO is responding around the world. There are approximately 1,000 health facilities of different size, not all hospitals, but clinics, polyclinics, and various types of healthcare delivery ent entities, um, either on front lines or within 10 kilometers of front lines. So in effect, the health system is becoming engulfed in this conflict, engulfed in this crisis. Sending supplies to hospitals is great, but those hospitals need power, they need clean water, they need engineers to be able to help, they need fuel for the, for the, for the for a fuel supply for generators. All of this infrastructure and engineering support is needed to keep your average hospital going in a normal situation. In the middle of a shooting war, it's almost impossible. So it is the situation itself, as the Director General has said, it is the violence and it is the conflict that is driving this health crisis. Um, and this health crisis will not stop, it will only get worse unless we have ceasefire, unless we have peace. And DG has said that quite clearly. We can, we can, this is putting, putting bandages on mortal wounds right now. Dr. Sosefel, 